insider altcoin information. We spoke directly to the top 300 projects in all of crypto to figure out what's going to happen next. We're going to break this all down for you to let you know what's coming. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, use this as fuel for your investing journey. Because when you're in the know, your money will grow. This episode of the Beam Pod is sponsored by KyberSwap. KyberSwap is a DEX and DEX aggregator, which is built to facilitate all your DeFi needs in one single platform. Fast, cheap, and safe. User experience is KyberSwap's sole focus to make everyone's life better in DeFi. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. And this is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today, we're going to be breaking down some insider crypto information. So we spoke to over 300 different projects. We went to Consensus in Austin, Texas, and had a chance to speak directly to the teams to get insider information, stuff that you're not aware of, we weren't aware of. And now we're going to present to you some really interesting facts and insights that are going to help you make a thesis and develop your portfolio for the rest of the year. You know, it's really exciting. First of all, Austin, Texas, great city. Oh, love Like, it. had an amazing time. I can see why people hype it up. Very cool and excited to go back again next year. But, you know, it's interesting when you go to a crypto conference. You know, sometimes you can get so caught up with crypto Twitter and meme coins and scams and rug pulls, and you just think the industry is a gigantic scam. But when you go to a conference and you see the real projects with real people behind them, you meet the founders or the developers or the marketing people, you know, behind every company is actually people. And when you talk to them and you see what they're building and you see their enthusiasm, it really gives you, you know, a, a more long-term and a more optimistic perspective on the crypto industry as a whole. It was incredible to see, you know, just how friendly everybody actually was and how knowledgeable. I think that's what uh, stood out because we went to Bitcoin Miami. Mm. That c- conference seemed to be filled with a bunch of maxis who didn't really know what they were talking about. I remember going to some of the booths and speaking to the founders of some projects, asking some really basic questions, and they just stood there with a blank look on their face. Yeah. Here at Consensus, speaking to anybody in the booth, whether it's a founder, a developer, the CEO, et cetera, and they had very concise, clear, and precise answers on you know the, div- the vision of the company, what problems they're solving, et cetera. So it was really refreshing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even though we're obviously in a crypto bear market, you know, crypto market has taken some massive hits, both to the price charts and the reputation over the past year. But we we found out some really interesting things about some top projects and some hidden gem projects that maybe we weren't really aware of or we knew of, but we didn't know exactly how exciting they were. So we're going to reveal these as we get through the episode. But first, I kind of want to talk about, you know, the other side of these conferences is the speakers, right? So they always have prominent speakers from different industries talking about the hottest issues both in the crypto markets and the world as a whole. So we saw some of these pretty interesting people. So we want to just quickly talk about, because you can get insights from what these people know and project and, you know, they kind of make some predictions about what's coming in in crypto. So the first one we saw was Chelsea Manning, who was, she's like a top whistleblower, really involved in Web3 and specifically in like the data privacy and security part of it. The reason we went to that is because, as you know, on the show, we talk about privacy and security as being a massive narrative in crypto going forward. And what she said is, yeah, you don't really realize how much of your data, like what companies are doing with your data, even though people are aware of it, it's really scary. So she was just talking about how we need, and it's very important for this new decentralized internet, privacy and secure internet. And I think watching her and and some of the insights uh, she shared kind of reinforced our thesis is why we talk about privacy and security projects a lot. Yeah, like Oasis, like Mina, you know, the zero knowledge. That's why the, the ZK narrative, I think, has been so hot. Mm. You know, as people start to wake up to, you know, what's going on with the government and how they're utili- utilizing our data and how much, how big that industry actually is. It's mm. billions of billions worth of dollars. So, uh, yeah, definitely interesting to watch her. Yeah, and then the next one we saw was Edward Snowden. Mm. So, I mean, most people will probably know Edward Snowden, like the most famous whistleblower. He wasn't there in person. No, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's not allowed in the, in the United States. He lives in Russia because yeah. he's, you know, extradited or banned or whatever from the United States. But he came in via video, via video conference, and his talk was very interesting because it was with the founder of Singularity Net, one of the top AI projects. So they were talking about not only the crypto side and Web3 side of AI, but also just how the world is not ready for what AI is about to bring to everyone over the, ne- the coming years. And an interesting takeaway that I had about that was they, they briefly touched upon AI regulation. Mm. 
mm. which we've started to see murmurs about, right? We've started to see Elon Musk talk about regulation. And Edward Snowden came out and said, look, we need to not hinder development of AI, but put stop gaps in place so it doesn't go crazy. Because one of the things that really struck me was when he said, you know, we aren't born human, we become human based on the training that we receive as a child. You know, your, your parents raise you as a kid. He said, there's nothing stopping from AI from becoming human if we train it to be like that. So he said, we need to train AI to become better than humans because look how much humans have fucked up the world. Mm. We need to, these robots to help us. So that really struck me. And I think regulation in AI is going to become a big thing. It's definitely uh, semi-concerning if the, if the AI does go opposite of a human and views us as a threat. Mm. Like there's always that side thing. As well, I think we're really going to start to see a ton of regulation come through quickly, and it's going to be mandatory. Uh, but that's what makes projects like AGIX, Singularity Net, so important is the open and transparent nature of it and decentralized nature of a blockchain project like that that allows everybody access to the source codes, to the marketplace, to be able to you know, leverage and utilize what everybody else is doing. And, you know, because I, th I don't think... He mentioned, like, OpenAI isn't truly open source yep. right like it is open ai but it, it's quite it's not as well they're kind of hiding what they intend to do with it what's what's occurring behind the scenes so um yeah definitely interesting as well yeah and now uh, before we're going to get to the, the projects and the hidden gems for sure but i just wanted to touch on regulation as well because that we had uh senator loomis and a bunch of people from the sec and regulatory people having some pretty heated debates and the only takeaway that I want to share about that is that it's clear that regulation is still a very slow moving piece as the government always is. You can tell that they don't know th they're, they're not meeting in the middle at all. They're still on e either side of regulation. Although uh, Senator Loomis did say that there is a crypto regulation bill, which will be brought forth to the government over the coming months. So they're making process, you know, day by day, month by month, year by year, but we're still very much in a gray area there. And we got further insight to that from speaking to Circle, um, the issuer of the USDC stablecoin, and, and how they're trying to push along regulation, and they're trying to help the government, but it seems as though they're getting pushed back, and it almost seems like the US doesn't want crypto to happen at all. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, we've seen them push Coinbase now has launched their perps index offshore. We're seeing, you know, they're pushing it away, and they're pushing away innovation. So hopefully they realize that that's a big mistake before it's too late, but it may already be too late. So at this point, it does seem like regulation, for those of you who are wondering, which would and could potentially spark uh, a new catalyst with bringing a lot of money into the sector, is still well away off. Unfortunately. All right, so now on to the project. So, you know, we had the pleasure of going around to all these booths, talking to developers, founders, marketing people from a ton of projects, and you could tell some of the narratives you know obviously on crypto twitter narratives are here and there and they're kind of all over the place but when you go to the conference you can see which in which narratives the building is being done so one of my takeaways was there's a lot of blockchain gaming mm. we've you know we've kind of started to touch we did that blockchain gaming altcoin episode there was a lot of really cool blockchain gaming projects uh space and time yeah that was really cool yeah like uh so they're one of like the foundational building blocks for web3 gaming projects we met the team we saw what they're building really exciting stuff also, uh, Nauda was building some really interesting games. Like, the first version of blockchain gaming was, you know, Axie Infinity, these kind of shitty games that aren't really that fun, more about making money. The next generation of blockchain gaming, which is why I'm excited, these are real games with, like, PS5-level graphics, real open-world exploration games. They take longer to build, which is why it's kind of gone away for a while. But what the games that we saw being developed at the conference, I'm bullish on blockchain gaming. Yeah, so Space and Time, they had a really unique booth right at the front right when you walked in. They must have spent a ton on that spot because it was, it was front and present to everybody. Mm. And we could see one of the games that was being played on their ecosystem, was, uh, I believe it's called Shrapnel. That's right. And it just looked like a, like a real game, like one that you play on PS5 or Xbox or something like that. You know, not a typical Web3 shitty, you know, 3D, 3D game or something. Yeah. Um, so that's a web three data warehousing. It's replacement for traditional blockchain indexing. Um, this project has received a ton of praise from Microsoft, Chainlink, Polygon. They're focusing on DeFi gaming, like space and time, I think is one that people should start to pay attention to a bit. Cause I wasn't aware of them previously. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. It was great to, great to meet the team as well and see what they're building. That's definitely one to watch. And also just watch all the games that are building on space and time. Yeah. Some of them are having uh, pre-sale launches and stuff like that. So that's some alpha for sure. That's an ecosystem I'd pay attention to. Absolutely. And the next narrative that 
you know, we knew it was going to be talked about, as we just mentioned with Edward Snowden, was AI. Mm. So we saw a lot of different AI projects there. Uh, one that really stood out to me was OriChain. Yeah. Um, the reason that OriChain stood out to us is because we saw this talk with Edward Snowden. We're hearing all about AI regulation. OriChain is in the catbird seat when it comes to AI regulation. They're, they're still a relatively small cap crypto company, but they are working on the regulation side of AI where it's everyone can use their layer one blockchain and they're putting in stop gaps so that every AI project can do their reporting with OriChain's tools and make sure they're up to regulatory speed when these, when these things crack down because it will crack down. So we had a chance to meet some of the team members there and I think they're, they're an interesting project to watch as well. Yeah, it's the only decentralized solution for trustworthy AI. Um, so I think this is one, it's not necessarily an AI project, like it's, but it's providing the transparency and the guidance and making it transparent for everybody to see what the intention is. So OpenAI, for example, they'd have to go through or I chain and then you could see, okay, this is your source code. This is your intentions and making it, you know, wide open to everybody. So yeah. I think that is a sleeping giant. For sure. And when you start to see these regulatory AI headlines come out, I think that's when, you know, we saw the massive bull run for AI projects earlier this year. You know, all the ones that were like chat GPT and blah, blah, blah. But I think this is, we're going to see a regulation AI narrative form here and a rye could be one to watch. Yeah. Uh, something else that was really interesting was how I noticed, you know, it Crypto becomes like an echo chamber. You know, we, we all use the same terms. I've talked to some of my friends, like, yeah, I've watched a YouTube podcast. And, you know, we try to make things as simple as possible. Mm. At least, to, but as you keep talking about for two, three, four years, you start to use jargon, right? And this jargon can be really off-putting to other individuals who aren't in this space. Like, what does Web3 mean? What does blockchain mean? So what I found really interesting was Near Protocol and how they were attempting to make a change to the way they start speaking to people now, they're going to really use it in layman's terms. So they have that new operating system, uh, blockchain operating system is called Boss. So they're just going to make it very consumer facing. We had a chance to experience it. You know, almost look like a like a Twitter or some sort. Like a that was really that was really unique, and I yeah. could see that starting to bring in the masses to a near. For sure. I mean, uh, if you've been following us for a while, you know, Near Protocol is one of our favorite projects. We did Truth about Near Protocol, um, but yeah, they're they're doing a bit of a pivot. Still taking, you know, all their, their, their sharding and all the interesting things about their blockchain, but now putting it in a more consumer-facing, easier to understand. Um, they're trying to become the operating system for Web3. Yeah. That's kind of like their layman's terms of it. Um, and yeah, we saw them actually display the technology to us, looked really sleek. So Near Protocol, again, it just it reaffirmed our status of having Near as one to watch. Absolutely. It was kind of interesting, you know, on a side point, meeting some of these these projects and founders, and, and they... Realizing that they watched the show. Yeah, that was crazy. Right? So, you know, you know, we're kind of, sometimes you're a bit removed. You know, everyone's working for, or we don't go to these conferences all the time, maybe once a year. But it was interesting to know that some of the founders of these top 100 projects and dev teams and marketing, they're like, oh, we know you guys. We watch the show. So you never know who's watching, right? Yeah, it was cool. Like the Kadena guys coming up to say, hey, mm -hmm. man, it's like, I watch your show. The Casper guys, we yeah. watch your show. So for sure. That's really, really, really cool. I also wanted to mention that going to these booths, you could see because, you know, a lot of, investors right now like why price not go up yeah <laughs> these projects have been building they're building a lot they're hiring the amount of people we've uh talked to were like oh i've only been with the team for three weeks i've only been with the team for six months mm -hmm. we're hiring our 10 guys here we're hiring our 20 guys here there's so much going on behind the scenes that you guys are not aware of and it's all going to be coming to fruition from what we took away from some of these projects over the next three months six months to a year and a half yeah and once that news starts to hit, man, I think that's when you start to see some price action. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So now going back to Kadena, which was, you know, we, we had a chance to spend some time with their team, lovely bunch of people. They're normally, you know, they're pretty tight-lipped, but that's because they know they have experience. They have connections to JP Morgan, the SEC regulatory side of it. They're a proof of work who doesn't necessarily come out with all these updates and stuff that some of these other, you know, pumpy layer one blockchains do, but... You know, we talked to the team. We've heard about that, you know, they weren't able to share what they've exactly what they've been doing due to regulatory stuff, but they're building the right way. So a, a project like Kadena, who you may not hear a lot about, that's one to watch because we know they've been building heads down during the bear market. And when these updates do start to come out, yeah, that's when these things could change. They're focusing on, focusing on development, not on attracting retail investors at mm -hmm. the moment. Uh, another thing I had was uh, Chili's and Socios. Um, you know, I know they spent a lot of time in the EU, 
in terms of you know working with a lot of the soccer teams or football teams if you guys are watching overseas yep and they are going to be starting to to partner and work with a lot of the north american teams as well so i think that'd be another uh, for the fan tokens. Yeah, yeah, Start keeping sure. an eye on that as well. Definitely. And then two other layer one blockchains I wanted to mention that we met the teams for, um, which you can tell that they've been doing a ton of building, working on partnerships, and probably have a lot of interesting announcements coming out over the next three, six, 12 months, is Casper Network and Hedera Hashgraph. Mm. So, you know, everyone knows those are two of our favorite blockchains, layer ones before, but it was nice for Josh and I to actually go and meet the teams from Casper and Hedera. They were able to, you know, not share again all the information about what they're doing, but you could tell by the, you know, they're hiring, they're expanding, they're doing partnerships here, here, and here, that Hedera and Casper, there's a reason that we talk about these projects so much, and it was really, it was driven home when we met the teams, so I would, n- I would not take your eye off Casper and Hedera moving forward. No, there's a few things you can kind of read between the lines, and I would highly recommend, not financial advice, keep keep these projects on your radar. Yeah, well, I mean, Casper Network just had that announcement that they uh, par- were working with the World Economic Forum, so you know they've got some big stuff going on. And Hedera, we know with the power of their governing council, it's only a matter of time before the companies behind them like Google, IBM, and Boeing start really ramping up that real-world adoption. That was one thing that Hedera stressed is, you know, they've been building, building, building. Now the pieces are in place, and you're going to start to see some partnerships roll out. So very exciting times. The last uh, layer one I would kind of put on your watch list for later in the year was Quai Network. Mm. They were the ones who were a big sponsor, had a big presence. They put upon that big party at the end. Yep. These guys are putting out, spending a lot of money um, going through the website. looks pretty cool what they're trying to do. Uh, they claim, claim to be the first layer one with capacity to scale to support all global commerce while maintaining decentralization. They're using merged mining and sharding. That's, I think they're launching later at the end of this year. Yep. So put Quai Network with a QQUAI yep. on your uh, watch list as well. Yeah, one of the uh, 50,000 TPS plus something, one of the fastest, most scalable blockchains. You yep. know, all these new narratives like Arbitrum, Optimism, ZK Sync, SWE or whatever. Quai Network could be another big one as well. Yeah. And then from a layer two, uh, what we were starting to hear was, you know how Arbitrum had that huge hype. And if, if you go on to L2 Beat and you can see the TVL that's locked across all the different layer twos that are kind of up and coming. Sounds like StarkNet could be one to keep your eyes on. Right, yeah, you've been talking about that one for a while. No token yet, but, you know, that's one I would start to just watch. For sure. And then another narrative, well, it's, it's kind of like an, an always underlying narrative in crypto is interoperability. Um, and, you know, I, I, it's going to be very important for projects to build interoper- interoperability into their platforms so that a user can go on and, and quickly switch between Ethereum, Polygon, you know, whatever, Avalanche, Arbitrum, whatever it is. And one project that really caught my eye was Change. Mm. So Change is, it's a cross-chain platform, but not only do they have this cross-chain protocol, they also have their own like de- decentralized wallet, which has the interoperability, interoperability built into it. So the founder who we met, he was also the founder of Iniswap. Mm. So one of the top cross-chain protocols out there. And now he was going through on his phone and showing us how Change worked and how easy it is. It's like, you know, you have USDT and Ethereum, flip it over to Polygon, now it's on Arbitrum, now you bought this token with this. Normally, when you do that on your MetaMask, not easy. No. Really fucking hard. Yeah. But with Change, as he demonstrated it so well on his phone, I was like, damn. And he was doing like 500 million. Yeah, he was like, just to show us. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. The, 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 but it has a liquidity. The liquidity, they have the top, li- uh, top liquidity out of any cross-chain interoperable protocol. And not a lot of people are talking about Change, so that's another one to put on your watch list. Yeah, it's a small cap, right? Yeah, yeah, still relatively small cap. I like that one. And we also had the Bitcoin layer for smart contracts, uh, Stacks, mm. also one, you know, it's going to be unlocking the, the whole Bitcoin economy. I think a lot of people are kind of sleepy on smart contracts for Bitcoin. Yep. A lot of development happening there. I know they're hiring. That is another project I'd be, because uh, you get the security of Bitcoin, plus the recognition, the yeah, brand name. for sure. So Stacks is really interesting as well. Definitely. And then one of the uh, last projects I want to mention, it was really, really a hidden gem that I had not heard of before. I think it's, it hasn't even really launched yet. It's called Mimi Cry. Right. It's That's a way. Cool. Yeah. So it's this, this guy has built this platform for you to, first they're starting out, it's a, he's marketing it as a way to short NFTs, which to me makes a lot of sense because most NFT projects are absolute trash (laughs) but then you know they're also doing you can long nfts as a group as like a you know etf and then you can also mix in tokens and then they have plans where you could long or short basically gamble or trade on any asset so you can go short a barrel of whiskey in scotland or long a crop of wine in italy 
right? Mm. And I think this is really cool because as we start to see the real world tokenization of assets, you're always going to have the DJ and gamblers who want to long and short any asset. And if a platform like Mimi Cry can be successful, allowing people to long and short NFTs, assets all over the place, you go on the website, it's really sleek, really well designed. They've got some decent investing uh, investments, a couple of mil behind them. So yeah, I would, I would keep a watch out for that one to launch. Yeah, that one's really cool, really, yeah. really cool. Also, I just want to really quickly touch upon the fact, the Hong Kong Chinese narrative as well. Mm. There's a lot of chatter around that, um, different hedge funds, different projects. It is going to happen. It, it, uh, I don't think it's going to be June 1st on the dot, but it sounds like there is going to be uh, a greater framework for projects and crypto trading to occur within Hong Kong mm. sometime within June. Right. And I don't think it's going to be necessary for everyone. I think it's right now, it's like, 1 million plus accredited investors. Sounds like they're probably going to bring that down to like, if you're holding 250,000, um, what the framework is going to look like that. For, yeah. For that. So it is happening, but I don't think it's a, a flick of the switch on June 1st. Yeah, it'll be gradual for sure. That was definitely, definitely a few people talking about that. So, I mean, that's all kind of the projects that I wanted to highlight. Do you have any more? No, that's it. Yeah. But I mean, I think I just want to drive home the point of as caught up as you can be in crypto and yeah, FTX fail and there's scams here and rug pulls. It's nice to meet people in the industry and you can get a gauge of which projects are building, which projects know their shit like you talked about, and then which projects are kind of just there for nothing. Yeah. You know, even some, we went to some booths and they're just like, eh. And you're like, okay, well, yeah, I'll just We move. won't name who those projects yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not nice, but. But yeah, you can really tell. So, you know, I encourage everyone to get out. Even if you, the equivalent for people who aren't lucky enough to be able to go to these conferences, just go into telegrams, talk to teams, ask them what they're building. You know, it's really interesting. And as opposed to just reading what, anonymous faceless accounts on Twitter are shilling garbage. <laughs> you can go and actually see what the real projects who are trying to solve real world problems do. And it gives you a more long-term and optimistic, you know, view of the industry, which, which I think I really appreciate now. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, if you guys like this episode, make sure to smash the like button, make sure you're subscribed and then tune into the next episode. Ooh, that one's going to be a banger. All views expressed by speakers on the Bean Pod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Bean Pod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.